The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this March 17th, 2016 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can listen to my show every evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Pacific Time on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Or you can listen to my show at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. Or go to my website at A-R-C-T-I-C-B-E-A-C-O-N.com. And... Uh, As you know, uh, shows like this uh, aren't sponsored. Uh, Radio stations don't pay us to uh, broadcast this. Of course, you can go to First Amendment and donate to keep that station on the air. However, if you want to keep me on the air at First Amendment Radio, uh, go to my website at arcticbeacon.com and uh, donate some money to keep the truth going. And when you look at it, I'll look at all this money that goes to these presidential elections. Uh, it's amazing to me that uh, people, you know, millions and millions of dollars go from uh, just average people, as well as much money from the lobbyists going into these elections. And I, I can't figure it out because people really understand that you've been lied to Uh, your whole life by these people, that there actually is a hidden agenda in America. There's people running this country in the central banking systems, uh, the Vatican from afar, working closely here with our politicians. Uh, And wouldn't it, uh, you know, how come people still believe there's hope? Well, they bring a new guy on the stage like Donald Trump, new to the political scene. And all of a sudden, there's this big oop to do. He's going to change everything. Look, When the lies get bigger, people believe them. And who said that? Adolf Hitler. Hitler was a Vaticanite, and so is Donald Trump. So you're not going to get anything better. Uh, People ask me, what about World War III, Greg? You've talked about it. Yes, they have it planned. And if you look behind the scenes right now, there's a military buildup in over 120 countries. And uh, I'll get to that next week on my show. But today I want to go back. Yesterday I did a, a really great presentation by a ex-Jesuit priest, Father Alberto Rivera, who uh, basically was an insider, a high-level Vatican uh, Jesuit priest, whose uh, job was to infiltrate Protestant churches. And when he realized and was saved, uh, he decided to uh, tell the truth about the Jesuit order. And I want to thank him for all of his testimony that he's given over the years until he was killed by them. And I never had a chance to talk to Alberto. However, I did talk to his wife, Nuri, and uh, also to Pastor Tony Alamo, who had been one of the first uh, pastors in this country to put him on the stage and let him speak and actually helped him financially as well to keep him going because he led a very difficult life once he left the Vatican. And when you look at this from a per, from my point of view, I'm looking back at the time frame here. Uh, the speech I played yesterday that he gave at the Alamo Ministries was on 629-1984. Now think back in 1984, how many people were talking like this? Uh, I remember when I went to Rome in 1979, I had no idea about what the Vatican was all about, and why should I? Because I was just, I was born a Catholic, I was given the same propaganda that everybody else was, and then I had to listen to the same media in America for years, even though I worked in it. And so when I went there, it was a slow learning process of who they really were, what this organization was really about. And today, many years later, I think you see the fruits of that on my show. Now. Tony Alamo knew this years ago and was talking about this. And he brought Alberta to his ministry to tell people about the truth behind the beast that the Protestant reformers talked about during the Reformation period. 
Now, uh, this is a clue on why I covered the Alamo story, because he has been persecuted for this. And he's one of the few people that stood up to the Vatican, both telling people in the, what they're about in the political world as well as what they're about in the spiritual world. So let's go back. I, I wanted to continue this uh, speech he gave. I got about halfway through. And then after that, if we still have some time, I'll play another one he did because he spent a number of weeks there uh, talking on a whole bunch of subjects. So let's get back to Father Alberto Rivera speaking at the Alamo Ministry in June 29, 1984. We are reigning under Christ on earth. Then every piece of land is our. Every human is our. Every government must be under our power. Certainly, the temporal power. He tells the institution they must have political power. Ah, they must have economical power. They must have educational power. They gotta control the education of your mind. They gotta supervise that education. Let that education go along with the canons, laws of the Roman Catholic institution. Let that attorney, let that doctor, let that banker, let that senator, let that governor, let that president, let that king and emperor, they all have to think accordingly the canon laws of the Roman Catholic institution. Yes, certainly. This is why they all bow in their professions to her and to the canon laws of the institution, they swear. Listen, quite. And in he that set on him half above. Now we go into the details that adorn that figure, that rider, and that white horse. That we can identify the person, not only with the horse, the color, but that we can identify the commission, three things, rider, horse, commissions given. And that is, by what he wear, not only, but what he carry with him. He said, or the Holy Spirit said, that one that set on him, on that white horse, have a bow. Now what that means, usually you see a bow with errors. See, you have no meaning, just a bow without errors. You do not too much with just a bow without errors to fire. You need errors and make a complete picture of someone that is prepared to make war. Oh, but that is not what this man is showing throughout the war. What they say, even President Ronald Reagan, what they say is a man of peace. A man of peace. Don't you see the poor Pope? He has no army. Don't you see how even they try to kill him so easily? Even their, their, their bodyguard doesn't work. It doesn't function. Oh, the poor man must be so persecuted. What a devil. He is a devil. Only these manipulations, only these horrifying, dramatic manipulations only can be in the minds of the devil, not only, but only then can be brought from the center of hell. Listen well, this, about no errors. I want you to see this. What do you see here? A crucifix. A crucifix. Now he do not only wear a white dress as he rides throughout the world. He do not only wear a white horse, I mean a white dress, a white vestment. But when he arrived with that white vestment, already, already do one thing first before anything else. He bow, he kneel. He kissed the earth. He kissed the soil where he arrived into that country. You know what he's doing. Exactly what this symbol empowered him to do according to that satanic goal among the two. Temporal power. He's claiming that land for him. He's claiming the land. He's saying to the nation already that once he step in that soil, that soil is here. He is the owner of that country, of that
of the nation and his king over. That gear always was the symbol of claiming back. The bow was there to confuse the people of the nations, to lie, as the Holy Spirit revealed in the book of Revelation, to lie to the peoples of the nations that he is Next. a man of peace, that he were no weapons to conquer. Ah, but he come to do that. Exactly that. A bow, yes, is a double meaning. Is one is literal, the other is very mystical. This is why you can see that this is the only crucifix all over the world, the only crucifix all over the world with this shape. Now that you know, once you take a look to television once or any other picture, look at that again. Why the Pope could not office without this crucifix next to him? Is peculiar one. As a matter of fact, we don't have time to go into the origin of this crucifix. But what you see in that crucifix? That crucifix, that usually, normally, all the crucifix are the combination of two lines. One horizontal and vertical lines. Two lines. But this is a concave line. It's the form of an arc. Arc. It makes a bow. The two sides of a bow are combined together at the end of a crucifix. Now read back the prophecy. And his Saturn can have a bow. Now his other identity as such. And a crown was given unto him. He doesn't say that he have. Now he have right to that crucifix. This is why he have it. He have that right. Yes, this crucifix is the only crucifix given in succession to every pope. No pope can keep it and say, this is mine. I'll take it with me when I go, resign or die. No, no, no. This crucifix passes on to every pope. He has the right to have a crucifix, but he doesn't have one right that he claims among many others. That he is king of kings and Lord of Lord, he believed that he is another title taken from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, listen well to this. Since he is already in that position with a bar and a crown, see why he have no right to that crown. He have no royal blood. He has not ever, never belonged to a royal dynasty. He is not a prince of any monarchy. They have created, they have made it. And even the kings and emperors of the earth have to submit to him as a king without ever being a king or a prince without ever half a drop of royal blood. You see, in order to inherit a crown, whether it is in England, or whether it is in Switzerland, or whether it is in, in whatever, uh, even in Spain right now, in order to inherit a crown, Spain was without king for many years. But that crown cannot be used for no one. Nobody can use that crown. That crown was preserved against all, even the opposition and rejection of different ideologies. That crown could not be touched. That crown cannot be used until there is a king. Franco wants to be a king. But the Pope said, no, you don't. We wait until we got the king prepared for law. And there is Juan Carlos the son of the Alphonse the third, the thirteenth. Yes, he's got to be a prince, ah, oh, to inherit the crown. He's got to be a prince. he got to have royal blood. And they wait and wait, but it's something else. Son of the princes, they were first inheritors of that crown. They were taken away. Why? Because they marry with people that have no royal blood, and they lost the crown. Only this marry to a queen, to a princess, a descendant of royal blood. Now listen well, this child of the devil, this antichrist, 
is even claiming to be a king of kings when he had never been not even that a king. But he claimed to be king of kings. He have a crown. A crown was given unto him. And certainly they give him a crown. The second step after the white dress is given to him already and the title to as Vicarius Philidae is granted then the next step another gift is given to him and that is a crown and is a triple crown another imitation of the crowns of Jesus Christ he was not pleased with a crown there is only a single piece no 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 he wants a triple crown what this symbolize, what that means, what king or emperor in the world will be given a crown without being member of any royal family first, second, what king or emperor in the world will be given a crown, even emperor that have three, three crowns and one, only the Pope of Rome. And a crown was given unto him that deserve the definition of these three powers. These three powers that combine the two goals that they are trying to pursue here, these commissions of these riders and these horses. What are these? The temporal power first to make one world government. That is your triple crown. One world government. Second, the apostolic cessation to define that that man is not only the only absolute authority over the kingdoms of the earth, not only, but that he, at the same time, combined these two powers, he office, or he occupied two offices, one as a man reigning over the world, and the other as God. Apostolic succession. That he received the power from Jesus Christ to be the head of his church. That he received from Jesus Christ the grant to take his place until he come. Certainly. One part said that he is king above the earth. That is the first crown. The second crown, he tell, it means that he is the king of the celestial cosmos. What that means is beyond the cosmos, beyond the stars and the planets, he governs. He governed beyond these places and heaven and earth, hell and limbo and purgatory. He had power in all the universe and beyond. But then, being one crown, that is where the three become one. And this is why the prophecy established that understanding. Listen well to this. The three combine one. He said that one crown is the crown of the Father. The second crown is the crown of Jesus. And the third crown is the crown of the Holy Spirit. He is the Trinity. He is God. Three persons manifested in one God. And He is all. Certainly. When you realize that you were set free from the papacy, now you do realize from what really Jesus Christ saved and set you free. If you are still now bound, directly or indirectly, bound to any even sympathy to this manifestation of the Antichrist and the person of that particular Pope, that today as never before has become more relevant more relevant to every nation, more relevant to every person, more relevant to Roman Catholic people, today than never before. This prophecy is before our own eyes being fulfilled. We will proceed with the last part. And he went forth conquering and to conquer, starting tomorrow. But now you have an invitation here as we conclude for this evening. Listen well to this. I read back to you the text, verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him, half a bow, and a crown was given unto him, 
and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Accompany me to Revelation chapter 19, and there is where I present to you this invitation this evening. Chapter 19 of the book of Revelation, as we read, now you compare, you do, you don't compare now, as the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, is bringing you under conviction. If you are not saved, if you are not a Christian, if you are not free yet from these courses of the papacy, you are called this evening to be free, to be free indeed, truly free, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Here is chapter 19 of the book of Revelation. As we read, let us see what we read in verse 11. And I saw heaven opening, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him, half a bar, was given a crown, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he have a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture deeper than blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nation, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he tread the vapors of the fierceness and rod of Almighty God. And he has on his vesture, on his high, a name reading, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Praise be his name. Stand up with me this evening. Worship him, glorify him. Because this evening he, only he, Christ, the King of kings, Lord of lords, can set you free from this mockery of this Antichrist. From this mockery that has been perpetrated throughout the century and has become a more relevant of him who is only the only King of kings and Lord of lords. You need that King. You need a Lord over your life, to rule your life, to govern your life, to possess your life. You need that Lord. You need that King. You call me Lord, he said, and you do not obey. You do not do what I said. Do what he said if you profess to know him. Do what he said. Anyone that said to know him and do not keep his word. Chapter 2 of the Gospel of the first epistle of John. Anyone, anyone, regardless of who is, that said the no him, the no Christ, and do not keep his commandment, do not keep his word, the Holy Spirit said is a liar, is a liar, and no liar will inherit the kingdom of God. You must come to him this evening. As we do pray, everyone pray, every believer pray. Praying for your father that is Catholic, still Catholic. Praying for the freedom of your mother that is still Catholic. Praying for the freedom of your wife, your husband, that is still bound to these curses of the papacy, uh, fulfilling under the prophecies of God these commissions right now. Yes, you can be free not only, you can be redeemed not only, you can be forgiven for your transgression and sin not only, but you can be protected, <laughs> protected under the power of King of King and Lord of Lord, right in this moment, during this time of crisis and confrontation and persecution and tribulation. We are in the midst of tribulation now, not yesterday or tomorrow. We are now in the midst of tribulation, you can be protected. You can serve a king, a living king, as Christ the Lord of Lord and King of King. Come to him. Make you available. Make your life available to him. Make your thought, make your entire person available to him this evening. Tell him, Master, Savior, here I come as I am. Here I come. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll come back with more from Father Alberto Rivera speaking in June of 1984 at the Tony Alamo Ministry. Back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal.
visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast and the truth about God's chosen people and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Okay, we're back on the Investigative Journal for this second half hour on March 17th, 2016, day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony, and you're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. And I'm going to play, like I said, Alberto Rivera was speaking at the Alamo Ministry back in June of 1984. And here's uh, another testimony he gave. Uh, this was a couple days before the one I just played, and I thought it'd be good to listen to because he brings on a converted Catholic nun to tell her story. So let's get back to Alberto Rivera speaking in 1984 at the Tony Alamo Ministry. I'm really thankful that in these last days of time, there are still people that are willing to make a stand and to do something for the Lord in this late hour of time, no matter what it costs. We're very privileged, as I said before, to have with us tonight Dr. Alberto Rivera, who has made this stand. He's an ex-Jesuit priest. Dr. Rivera, praise the Lord. Praise him. To him 
envy the glory now and forever. Yes. What a wonderful thing to snow and to see that as the days go by, prophecies are being fulfilled and the people of God are getting together. Yes. In preparation for the greatest event on earth and heaven. The great celebrations of the weddings of the Lamb. Certainly, for all that glory, the cross will be changed. But it takes us a little time. It will take us a little work to get there. And we should do it with honor and with joy. I have with me this evening a converted Roman Catholic nun. And this is one of the many nuns and priests that are coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly, it pay off for even you to go and give a track to someone. The result, you will never see it entirely. Until we get to heaven, we will know what that track did in the life of many people. Then it pay off to serve Christ and be faithful to his church, it pay off to go as far as he called us to go, regardless of the cost, because we see these constant living testimonies as a result of the work and conviction of the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. In the life of nuns and priests, more than generally speaking, in the life of Roman Catholic people, today, in response to all these imitations that you see and watch in television, many priests and many nuns and many different religious programs are going on. And people almost are persuaded to believe that these priests are truly Christians. People not only almost persuade to believe, people already believe. Of course, when someone believes that this is a reality in the life of a priest, they go back to the Mass after the show was over, and go back to the confession, and go back to the Pope, and go back to Mary, and go back to the saints, and go back to his rosary, then I will not only say that there is something wrong with that priest, but I will say there is something wrong with the people that believe that he could be a Christian. Then we have both eyes, and God wants to respond to that in a very effective, powerful way, as only God can do it. This testimony of Sister Ildwara Bamunde is one of the many that God is using as a response, the greatest and most powerful response to all these masquerade and imitation that you even watch in television going on today. The Lord is doing his work, there is no doubt. He takes his time too, you know. He lives in eternity. He takes his time. But when the time comes, then the world be better prepared. I would like for her to bring to you a briefing testimony of her conversion. And she is going to speak in Spanish. I'll try to translate it into English. And then we will at least have an idea how many things. Uh, she's not going to be able to go in details of many things, but at least those who can listen in Spanish, she has the tapes of her testimony, complete testimony in Spanish. Those can hear. And very soon she will have those testimonies in English too. But how many of you have read or hear of Sister Charlotte here in America, the conversion of an ex nun. Let me see your hands of those who have read or hear of the conversion of Sister Charlotte. Now, very few. But uh, for those who do not know or have not been able to read, that was a nun 50 years ago almost, and she was converted, and she was brought out of the convent, and they took her back again. After they catch up with her, they forced her to go back because she was in a cloister, and a nun in a cloister cannot survive 
cannot live outside of a convent. If she escaped and she do not go out under dispensation, as it's called, then they will bring her back and keep her for the rest of her life under terrible punishment. They call flagellation, of course, is torch. But they give a religious terminology as flagellation of the flesh. That is torch. Our sister was placed under torch from her head down to her feet. She bear the marks of these torches that she received in the convent. When she was able finally to realize, not even saved yet, but even much before she was saved, as happened with me, as you can see through all these experiences that I have related to you, that during these confrontations we did have this punishment because in many instances I cannot resist the idea of uh, speaking of the very things that I was being confronted by the Bible, by the Word of God. Then she have some reasons to speak up and they silence her with tortures and punishment until the day that she received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior and she was free, entirely free. Now she is from Colombia. She has spent a great deal of time in the Colombian mountains and the Amazons regions reaching and teaching the Indian population in these areas as a nun. And there is where she received, through all these trials, she received the light of the gospel, and through the gospel she received the knowledge of her Savior, Jesus Christ. Allow me to introduce Sister Ilduara Bamunde, and she will speak to you briefly. Dios les bendiga. Uh, mi nombre es Ilduara Bahamundi. Yo soy colombiana y uh, sé que la mayoría pues hablan inglés, no hablan español. Pero en esta noche uh, para mí es de regocijo estar con ustedes y compartir alguna experiencia. Me he llenado de alegría ver un grupo de personas que dan testimonio del rescate de Jesucristo en este tiempo. Es una evidencia, la salvación, la realidad de un Cristo vivo para este tiempo. Mi experiencia fue en un convento durante 12 años y de allí me sacó el Señor. Estaba trabajando como monja misionera entre los indígenas, la tribu de los indios ticunas en el Amazonas. No, she went too far. <laughs> now, you, you were benefit, those who understood Spanish, but I'm going to be briefer than that. <laughs> now, you already hear her name, and she is praising God, because at the time that she arrived here among you, as happened with me, uh, she realized that truly the Lord Jesus Christ has been worshipped here, and has been honored here. And then uh, she blessed the Lord for that, knowing how you too has been delivered from the powers of darkness in many areas in your life. That is a thrilling experience because it reminds her from her own uh, experience what the Lord has done for her. As she mentioned, and I did mention, she was, by the time that she started now, giving you uh, a brief testimony, as she started mentioning where and what area of Colombia she was working with the Indians. Cuando, de, a la edad de nueve años, uh, decidí ingresar al convento de Sierva de la Madre de Dios, uh, fue con una pregunta, con un propósito, y el propósito era conocer la verdad. Uh, ya me habían respondido que la verdad estaba en la Santa Madre Iglesia. I was nine years old when that is the first stage of her experience. I was nine years old when I was inside, invite, persuade to go to a convent. And that is usually 
And my own sister even went about seven when she was seven years old. You can imagine what has happened in, the, in many centuries in the past when this was allowed to take place even under the laws of every country. Then, uh, when she was already nine years old, the question that brought her to the convent already was to find and search where was the truth. And she questioned the mother superior when she had the interview with the mother superior about where she can find the truth. Shall her find the truth there? She said, my uh, dear uh, uh, girl, I can promise you, I can guarantee you that the truth is with our holy mother uh, church. Los primeros años que pasé en el convento eh, fue en una intensa búsqueda, buscando la verdad, buscando a Jesucristo. Jesucristo es realidad de salvación. Y si es verdad que está en un convento, entonces tenemos que sentirle en nuestros corazones, en nuestras vidas, sentir realidad, certeza, seguridad de salvación. Y pasaron ocho años, hice los votos temporales, hice los votos perpetuos de pobreza, castidad y obediencia. Y finalizando estos votos, hice estudios de teología y me di cuenta que mi religión estaba cubierta por un velo de falsedad. As I went into the convent and I was taken in 12 years later, I already took the, my first vows and two different types of vows. One are temporal vows that you can be released from, and then there are the uh, perpetual vows, the eternal vows that you can never be released from. Uh, it's the case of a priest that is ordained the same thing. Uh, he is ordained forever priest, regardless of whether he become a criminal, whether he commit the greatest immoralities or whatever, even if he quit, he is still a priest forever. We will talk about that later. In the meantime, throughout these 12 years, she went on and on searching for that very question or that very answer of the question that brought her into the convent. Where is the truth? And actually, she went into further deeper study as in her uh, case, in her convent, not all the convents uh, take the same uh, measures and the same studies uh, that she was in. But throughout all this time, she was already ordained or prepared as a nun after all the different steps then that she had to take. Descubriendo que mi religión, la religión católica la cual profesaba, tenía un velo de falsedad, decidí entonces empezar a descorrerlo, empecé a buscar en la tradición y me di cuenta de cuántas cosas y cuántas invenciones hay en la tradición, mas cuando descubrí totalmente la tradición, entendí que había oído hablar de Jesús, pero no había conocido a Jesús, y esta es una diferencia grande, no es lo mismo oír hablar de Jesús que conocer a Jesús. Uh, she started getting closer to discover uh, that already was kind, uh, and she used the term uh, veil, uh, was a veil that will uh, stop her from seeking any further, or searching any deeper, or seeing any further. Uh, that veil is, as she put it, is the tradition, was the tradition. It happened for her as a nun, happened for me as a priest, and, and would for everybody, even for any single Roman Catholic. When uh, she uh, felt more need of Christ than ever before, that veil, it will be there, it will be present, the, the, the manipulations of the traditions to a point that you could not go any further, even in your most urgent desires and needs about Christ, the person of Christ. She said the difference is that while uh, she experienced the intellectual knowledge, is that idea, the intellectual knowledge about the name of Jesus, she could not conceive the person of Jesus. She could not embrace, she could not uh, be rescued by, she could not touch it. Uh, always was that intellectual idea of Christ. 
I have Jesus, but that is how far she was from him. Descubrí que el sacerdocio no era para este tiempo. El sacerdocio fue abolido con el sumo sacerdote, nos dice la Escritura, nos dice la Biblia, que tenemos un solo sacerdote que traspasó los cielos y cuando fui a buscar el nombre de ese sacerdote, estaba segura que era el nombre que había en el Vaticano, en aquel tiempo Pablo VI, eso era lo que yo había aprendido, que ese era el nombre del sumo pontífice. Pero al ir a la escritura y encontrar en el libro de Hebreos capítulo 5, encuentro que el nombre del sumo pontífice no era Gregorio I ni Damaso I, pero sí era Jesús de Nazaret, nos dice la escritura. As I went on in my need of Christ, I was brought to the uh, knowledge of the functions of the priesthood, and to me, uh, as a nun, as uh, it has happened for everybody else, uh, that particular person, that priest, was the closer seen to Christ. And then suddenly, from the priest up to the Pope, he will be closer, he will be more real Christ, according to that veil, that tradition. Of course, then I found that through the scripture, as I read Hebrew chapter 5, there was only one high priest, and that high priest was Jesus Christ himself and was in heaven. He was not in the Vatican. He was not Gregory the I or Damaso the I. He was Jesus Christ and still being so. Yes. Uh, durante siete años, uh, de los primeros que estuve en Romana, me enviaron para defender los santuarios que habían en nuestro país. Uno de los santuarios que fuimos a defender fue el santuario de la Virgen de la Salud. Eh, era un altar levantado en honor a María e íbamos a defenderlo y por siete años perseguí a todo evangélico que llegara a ese pueblo y lo sacábamos del pueblo. Throughout a space of seven years, it took me not only to believe that, that there was the church that I was, but throughout the struggle of finding the truth, I became more desperate, but at the same time she became more militant because she was sent to protect the Catholic faith with other nuns into certain areas of Colombia where preachers they were preaching the gospel and every time that a preacher a missionary went into these fields these areas then the bishops will call these nuns to their commons and will commission them through the mother superior to go into these places and get rid of these evangelicals of these christians regardless of the cost and no matter how they were there as she put it to defend to protect the Catholic people from you know what heresy they said. Perseguimos a muchos evangélicos, dos, tres, cuatro, todos los que llegaron, pero tuvimos una experiencia. No somos uh, simplemente evangélicos, somos hijos de Dios. Y mientras perseguíamos y derrotábamos a todos los que llegaban con miedo, con temores, o buscando quizá la paz y confraternizar con las monjas, eh, descubrimos en medio de ellos a un hombre que sabía lo que significaba ser hijo de Dios y sabía dónde se había parado, sobre la roca. En el medio de ese estrago en perseguir a los cristianos, encontré two differences, that not all those believers, that so-called believers and so-called Christians and so-called preachers and pastors and missionaries, they were not all. She could detect something was different, because while others were trying to make peace with Rome, others were rejecting Rome to their very life and blood. She noticed that difference. There were some missionaries that at any cost they will make priests, they will find a place for dialogue with the priests and the nuns, and they will all be brothers and sisters. But she detected that, and she was not a Christian. 
Le quemamos su casa, lo hicimos meter a la cárcel, tratamos de comprarlo con dinero para que se uniera a nosotros. Le persuadimos que éramos iguales, que predicábamos lo mismo, mas se paró con autoridad de Dios y nos dice, no predicamos lo mismo porque ustedes predican una institución para purgar las penas, mas yo predico a un Cristo que dice, justificado por la fe en Cristo Jesús, tenemos paz para con Dios. Praise the Lord. Man. As I noticed that difference, I went to see a man and I confront him, I face him. And that was a very different one of all the evangelists and preachers and missionaries that I came across. Because when I spoke to that man, why he was not willing to keep the peace and why he will not conceive the Catholic people as Christians and the Roman Catholic institution as a Christian church, he will say no, there's no such a thing. He said no, there's no way that we can make peace until you surrender to Jesus Christ. And there's only one way, and it's written here. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5. And he quote to her that through the word of God, he was commissioned and commandment only to keep peace. And people is called and invited to keep peace with God through Christ, not to compromise us. Decidí a través de uh, la seguridad de este evangélico, de este hombre que les estoy hablando, decidí buscar y conocer al Cristo que este hombre tenía. Era el Cristo vivo, era el Cristo real. Y uh, durante una misa en el convento, quizá la última misa a la cual participé, la superiora general me dice, vas a escuchar y vas a participar en esta misa de corazón. Jamás había participado de esa misa, mas sabía que el libro de Hebreo dice que todo sacerdote está celebrando día tras día sacrificios inútiles que no pueden borrar tus pecados, pero Cristo, habiendo ofrecido una sola vez un solo sacrificio por el pecado, nos ha hecho perfectos para siempre. Praise God. Uh, through this weakness, this truly Christian servant of Christ, uh, I became concerned about the words that he said from the scripture and many other uh, things that he transmitted and, and told me. And as the days went by, I was very picky from their own questioning everything that I did and, and questioning the Mother Superior, and this is where my troubles started, really, with the convent, through the reading of the scripture and through the testimony that I was receiving. Okay, we're going to have to uh, end the show today. I'll come back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal and finish up uh, this testimony. Uh, that Alberto Rivera is translating from this Catholic nun. Uh, back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver, Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.